All right. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, joining today's webinar. My name is Joe Raldes, and I am the VP of Marketing at Cast AI. Uh, we've got an exciting webinar for everybody today. Um, I am willing to bet that everybody who's here now is here because they're starting to lose sleep over Black Friday. Uh, good news is you chose a good place to be, and you came to the right place. We've got uh, Giri today and Ahi with me today, um, and we're going to be talking about uh, best practices for ensuring that your infrastructure is ready for Black Friday with an emphasis on how you can use automation to reduce manual toil and reduce your cloud costs while also ensuring that your infrastructure is running optimally. Uh, before we get started introducing Ahi and Giri, I uh, want to spend a little, uh, a minute or two just explaining some uh, housekeeping. Um, we, throughout the conversation, are going to be incorporating in people's questions. So as you have questions, please click on the Q&A tab at the bottom of the screen. Please add your questions, and we'll make sure that we weave those questions in throughout the conversation. Um, with that, um, let's go ahead and kick over to Ahi and Giri to introduce themselves. Ahi, you can go first. Okay. So, hi, my name is Ahi. I'm from Yotpo. Uh, I'm leading the DevOps in UFO for, for over two years. Uh, before that, I led the DevOps in companies such as Barclays, um, Varian, Checkpoint, Rapid, and more. Um, go ahead, Giri. Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Giri, and I've, uh, I joined Cast AI just about a month ago. Super excited to be here. Uh, I, I, I'm the director of product marketing at Cast AI. And my passion is all about, you know, products and customer experience. I want to make sure that customers understand value of products, especially in the uh, high tech uh, industry. So I focus on cloud native, Kubernetes, containers, and security and performance on uh, these platforms. <clears throat> All right, so uh, let's get started. A little bit about Cast AI. Who are we? What do we do? If you're not if you're not familiar with what Cast AI has done or doing, so we are the leading Kubernetes automation platform that saves customers more than fifty percent on cloud costs. Now you all know that DevOps uh, teams managing cloud infrastructure and Kubernetes clusters, especially, often struggle with optimization. Most of the work is manually done, and Cast AI focuses on this problem. So we focus on optimizing cloud infrastructure that is usually over provisioned and underutilized. We've seen that industry reports say that on average, only 13 to 15% of CPU resources are used. So that's why we have our AI-driven automation that leverages advanced machine learning algorithms to continuously improve the performance of cloud-native applications. And we have our way of tackling cost optimization. It's not just through reports and recommendations, which you would normally see, Cast AI actually performs the optimization through our software. And we often save up to 50% of uh, cloud costs. Um, about Yotpo, I would give it back to Ahi to describe what they do. So Yotpo is basically an e-commerce platform uh, focused on retention for, for merchants mostly. So our customers are Ikea, Steve Madden, uh, GoPro and more. We have very large customers. And basically, for these large customers, uh, what we do is we provide, first of all, reviews for the stars that you see on the widget when you go online and buy something. That's us. Uh, and we do much more stuff. Uh, we send SMSs and emails uh, in order to promote marketing. Uh, we have subscriptions uh, uh, for, the, for our merchants so that people can actually subscribe to the product that they like. And we have the, uh, actually we have a customer data platform, which enables you to basically use the data from the reviews in order to use it in other platforms, such as subscription and email and everything else. So our, our customers are basically merchants. And for all our merchants, Black Friday is the biggest day of the year. This is where they, they make the money. And this is where us as a platform for them, it's the most important for us to be stable and give them the, the, the service that they need. Nice. Thanks, Ahi. Uh, I noticed Brooklyn in, on as one of your logos, and I'm sure I've contributed to their revenue last year because I got some sheets, and the experience was amazing. Their website was good. I didn't have any trouble ordering and 
uh, checking out. Thank you. Uh, so, all right, this is the fun part. It's all about Black Friday economics. No, it's all about money. It's no longer just today, Black Friday or Cyber Monday, however you want to call it. It's a multi-billion dollar phenomenon that continues to break records. We've been tracking you know, year over year. And in 2023, a staggering 9.8 billion was spent online in a single day. With the average shopper is shelling out about $300. And with respect to projection, Black Friday sales is projected to reach about 10 billion this year and maybe about 12 billion by 2028. In the last few years, we've also noticed that mobile devices accounted for about 25% of online sales on Black Friday. And if your retail organization is aiming for greater business results and provide the best shopping experience for its customers, the following slides will take you through the journey on how your team can achieve while saving infrastructure costs, which is most important. <clears throat> so to get things started, you know, we all talk about planning before any big event. I'll let Ahi talk for a few minutes about how they plan uh, before think, uh, you know, big events like Black Friday or Cyber Monday. So, so for us, Black Friday is like the biggest event of the year. As I said, basically most of our customers, uh, the, the money time is is Black Friday. And this is where we need everything to be up and ready. It starts from the business. So the business, the business basically sell off uh, the dates. So in this case, it's quite, it's quite easy. It's Black Friday, it's Sunday, Friday, Monday. This year, it's the 29th of November and the 2nd of December. And, and then we start to plan the planning around that. So, uh, for example, we start uh, to thinking about how should we do purchases and how long should we do the purchases? Uh, should we, we do a, a feature fee? What about all the vendors such as Cast AI, uh, AWS, Logic, and more? We go, we talk with, we talk with them. From support perspective, they also uh, review the, the issues that we had in, in last year and basically we need to make sure that these issues do, do not re reoccur. From DevOps perspective, actually we'll cover that in, in a lot of all depth, but we, we have the hours views that we need to prepare for, and we need to be able to scale up and scale down, so all the auto-scaling strategies will be up and running. Um, and from engineering, so in your school, basically, uh, the engineers own their services. So they need to make sure that they have the right monitors. They, they need to make sure that they have secret workers work in, in place. They need to make sure that they have st stuff testing in place uh, or even before Black Friday in order to make sure that uh, that we're able to, to scale and, and handle the load. And the hardware has also been, been planned by the dev teams themselves. So basically backup and install that databases and, make, and making sure that um, Every critical infrastructure is is uh, is uh, we know what to do if something fails. Another important point is uh, circuit breaker. So we need to make sure that we are that we are up and running, no matter if any of the vendors or, or our infrastructure fails. So that's also one of the things that we are focusing on uh, during the stress testing. I would say that the biggest issue in Black Friday is basically the scale up and scale down. And I think that we'll touch about that uh, next. And I think that there's a conflict here between saving money and and the scale up and scale down. So I think, and we we're trying to be to to have like the the best margins possible. So we don't want to spend too much on on one part, on one hand, and the another one. And on another side, we want to make sure that our infrastructure is reliable. I don't see any questions from the crowd, and I'm I'm like I'm kind of looking for it. So I, I will ask the crowd something. What are you doing for Black Friday? Are you doing something that we're not? Can we learn from you as well? So feel free to write it, write it in in the chat. Thanks, thanks, Ai. Uh, they'll probably be asking questions maybe from the next slide where we talk about challenges, right? No matter you know how many teams are involved, all the planning involved, it's impossible to manage Black Friday without automation. You know, it's a it's a force multiplier for the Black Friday team. So we'll. Uh, pivot to you know customer challenges. Maybe here some of the uh, you know audience they'll they'll uh, you know agree with some of the challenges that we sh we're talking here. Like uh, he mentioned, you're in a constant tug of war between performance and cost. So how do you keep costs down while making sure the application performs 
as required or even better. So what happens? This usually re results in over-provisioning while always being on the cautious side. And at this stage, what do teams do? They know that they're over-provisioning. They know costs are going up. Jimmy, let, let me know very of what we, we, we have been doing in the last years. And actually, we stopped doing it, so it's interesting. And we had a calendar, basically, for Black Friday with the, with the code field. And once the code field starts, then like a day, a day before the code field starts, then we start to scale up everything. Uh, they are making sure basically all the ASDs that we have, all the on-demands that we have, scaling up to twice the size or maybe even a third the size. It depends on the on the service. And and then after Cyber Monday, so it's usually Tuesday or, or Wednesday in the morning, then we manually scale down everything. Just to be on the safe side, just to make sure that everything is running smooth. So that's that's what we were doing, and we were certainly over over provisioning, and that was up until last year. Last year, what happened? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> we we will see what happened last year. Uh, all right. So, but most customers, what do they do? What they do is go for cost optimization, and they look at you know they go to Google, look at cost optimization tools, and most tools. What they do is recommendations. Uh, and I'm going to put that in quotes because uh, it's not the most easiest thing to do, just recommendations, right? What do you, as a user, you will have to manually go through a trial and error method, try to get the right combination and then achieve successful cost optimization. That is a huge challenge. But let's also focus on one thing that we are going to talk a lot about, it's spot instances. So if you are not aware of what spot routes are, they have they typically happen during high demand periods like Black Friday. And most customers and users, they are hesitant to move your workloads to spot instances during this time because you're not aware that when these instances will go down, you only have two minutes on AWS to migrate these workloads. And the general assumption is that there's no way of moving back to spot when the marketplace stabilizes. So what we've seen most teams do is move the workloads to on-demand from let's say Black Friday, which is uh, a week or two before Black Friday to all the way to January. And that's going to take a huge hit on the cost. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. just to add, to, add, to add to that, there is the dreaded no spot available issue. So mm -hmm. uh, I think I think that this is one of the issues that uh, in Black Friday, uh, when, when you're facing the type of spot that you're using and it's not available in your availability zone, this is where you want to bury your hands in the sand. But we figured it out. I think that with, with Cast, we, we have a solution. Yeah, yeah. And it's all output, right? Uh, so before moving on to that, one interesting thing, Aki also mentioned about code freeze. So there's this huge question on everyone's mind during Black Friday. You know, do I do code freeze or change freeze or do I not do? Uh, we've seen some of the outages like 2022, Nike had a huge outage where shoppers were getting timed out pages. And, you know, there are multiple examples of uh, what happens when there is a code freeze? So the whole IT talk, world. Uh -huh. In your we are doing a code freeze. It's a very short code freeze. It's a, it's a seven days code freeze. That's that's what it is. Okay. And and and, and in that code freeze, it's also not very hermetic. Got it. Okay. And I've been told at Casti, the engineering team, we don't have a code freeze. So we do. We believe in frequent smaller changes that are better than one big change. So I would also maybe at this point, maybe ask the audience, you can put in your chat window or uh, send a message. Do you guys do code freeze or you don't? Uh, so there are a couple of things. I mean, when we talk about code freeze, we can talk about change management automation. Uh, he mentioned about automated rollback. You have a, a fallback mechanism. So you basically have to think about your legacy code if you have legacy code or are you mature enough as an engineering organization to be in that elite zone where you have a good CICD maturity level, you have Argo rollouts and so on. <clears throat> um, so some of the recommendations and best practices, again, Aki, you can uh, pitch in any time. Uh, I don't know if you've looked at all these uh, Dora metrics, but you know, as, as an organization, you might fall under the elite category if your metrics are uh, scoring oh. well in these Tora metrics. 
So Dora Metrics is interesting because um, it's like this Dora, Dora Metrics was published uh, several years ago. And it's not that easy to actually measure them. So uh, deployment, file, deployment frequency and lead time, uh, you, you expect that uh, there, will, there will be a lot of out-of-the-box tools that will measure them, especially also for the change favorite and the time to restore. And I even think that in the last year, they added uh, the uptime into the Dora metrics. And yeah. so I think that uh, we, we need to add to, uh, to that as well. And yep. uh, right now, we are in a process to, to make sure that we are uh, measuring them in a frequent, uh, in a frequent way. Uh, we didn't have them, actually, for not, not for the whole company, not for the whole services. We had them in specific places. Um, so right now, actually, this is our focus, to make sure that we have all the door metrics, especially also mm-hmm. uptime. Nice. Um, okay. Regarding the spot interface and, and safe uh, uh, fallback mechanism, so we use spot for 80% of our production workloads. Um, so we don't use them as a, fa- a safe fallback. We use them as the main uh, engine, basically. And this this is an engineering challenge to make sure that uh, uh, you don't have any state in your in your in your compute, so that you can basically move from any machine to any machine uh, at any given time. It's not an easy challenge. Uh, if you have a monolith which is like ten years old or more, it's it will be it will be hard. But uh, actually, Yotpo has built uh, its services since 2015, almost nine years ago on containers. And basically, this is the architecture that we have. And so not state and everything is on spot. The only thing that is not on spot are databases, uh, self-managed databases. Okay. Okay. Thanks for that uh, info. And uh, yeah, just... Closing this slide, I would talk about one thing that's, you know, one of my favorite topics in security, which is DDoS prediction. And we've all seen that during peak events, it's actually really hard to, uh, you know, uh, differentiate between legitimate and illegitimate traffic, right? DDoS here could be an illegitimate traffic. And there have been a lot of instances where, let's say, the colonial pipeline outage and the Kasaya supply chain attack, all these happened during either a July 4th weekend or a Mother's Day weekend, which is you know, peak period. So I would I would say, go look back at your <coughs> DDoS solution, whatever you have in place, and make sure that your Kubernetes clusters are also protected. So that is also one recommendation that I would like to point out. All right. So uh, going back to the main topic, right? Why is it a challenge for teams to control costs? Uh, at Cast, we use this term called sandbagging, uh, which is basically the practice of over provisioning. We spoke about over provisioning, Aki uh, confirmed that they are, you know, they have this practice of over provisioning, and it's this, this is how it usually works. Let's look at the app or development team; they over provision by let's say thirty percent, and the SREs again over provision resources by another thirty percent. So it's going to uh, cascade into a much bigger number by end of the day, and. Uh, it, it's a it's a very hard thing to fix. I mean, it, you all, always be on the cautious side, like I mentioned. So how do you fix this? Automation. And uh, when you look at automation, these are challenges, not just for Black Friday. Why do you want to automate this whole workflow of provisioning? You have, you know, although we're talking about Black Friday here, you could be running into this situation on a regular basis. Uh, if you look at the US federal holiday calendar, they have 11 days and you have Prime Day, and all these retailers are competing for Prime Day again. So eventually, you're looking at almost something similar to Black Friday once every month. So how do you do this manually? It's nearly impossible, right? So what do we do? What does Caste automate? Sorry, you have a, a comment there, Rahi? No, I think that uh, we can say that at start, uh, a few years ago, this is exactly what we've done. Uh, we've done it manually. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a guesstimate, basically. Uh, that's what, what we're trying to do. We're trying to estimate the, the load. And um, the, I think that the, the point here is basically the auto-scaling uh, strategy. Like, when do you auto-scale at which, uh, in a, on which uh, KPI are you using for the auto-scaling itself? Uh, 
in this world today. It's not like we're adding machines manu manually to production. It doesn't happen. Okay. Yeah, I hope uh, the DevOps team, they, they get better sleep <laughs> this Black Friday. Uh, all right, so for cost optimization, Cast AI delivers three main solutions. You can see here, workload autoscaler, bin packing, and spot instances, or as I would call it, workload autoscaler is our workload right sizing, bin packing is our node uh, autoscaler. So uh, what autoscaler does is they it picks the most optimal resource based on demand, and through flexible configurations policies you can set, you can automatically program to right size workload resources. Cast AI also runs these machine learning algorithms. So we learn about application needs from various metrics and calculate recommended values for CPU and memory. Uh, the autoscaler mechanism that Cast AI also combines benefits of HPA and BPA. What, are, what is HPA, BPA? You might be familiar with horizontal pod autoscaler or vertical pod autoscaler. And you might be wondering, hey, Kubernetes already offers these. Why should I use Cast? Because we combine both uh, with Native Kubernetes, you're getting benefit of either HPA or VPA, but we have actually combined both to handle rapid fluctuations in workload demand, which usually happens during peak periods, and also making sure that your applications remain responsive and cost-effective. And bin packing, if you're not familiar with bin packing, what does it do? I would take an example of the Japanese station manager. I'm sure most of you have seen that video where this manager pushes and they'll try to squeeze passengers into the train uh, just before the train leaves so that all the passengers get in and the train you know, leaves the station with uh, minimum space wasted. So that's what bin packing is. We try to pack all these pods into nodes and try to reduce wastage there. And the final uh, thing is pod instances. This can be tricky and without a solution like cast, he said that they were doing it manually. It'll take many hours, many resources to monitor and use pod instances. I see a question. All right. <clears throat> uh, so I let Ahi talk about spot instances and what they like about Cast when it comes to spot instances. So basically, we've been on spot instances before Cast. And the issue with spot instances, I think that this is exactly the graph that you're showing right now. And uh, the price, the price of the spot instances is very fluctuating, up to the price of, of an on demand, which is quite crazy. Uh, and it depends on the AZ and on the instance type. And so what we what we've done in the at the first place, we basically when we saw an increase in cost, then we looked at this spot instances that we're using and and we thought about okay should we change the AZ or should we change the instance type? This is one of the first stuff, stuff that we've done. And we've done it manually for several months and we were able to actually reduce the cost uh, quite nicely. But then we understood that we need to do this like every day. It's 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 a, it's a specific work, it's a huge amount of work. And then we started, started the search, uh, how do we do it automatically? How do we how do we basically have a mechanism that will basically choose for us the right AZ, the best cost-effective AZ, the best cost-effective instance type? Uh, and we examined several uh, solutions. We examined uh, Carpenter, we examined Spot.io, we examined uh, ScaleOps, and we examined Cast.ai. And uh, after we've done PSCs with all of them, then then we chose Cast AI to move forward. Actually, Cast AI at that time uh, was the only one that actually provided a solution to this specific question. Uh, Carpenter back then didn't look at it at all. We're talking about, I think, one year and a half ago, something like that. Uh, Spot and IO and ScaleOps looked more inside of the pod and not on the instance itself. Now it's it's quite scary because basically Cast AI is a cluster autoscaler, so we need to actually replace the cluster autoscaler of EKS of where we're using a Kubernetes over AWS. So replacing the the native cluster autoscaler, um, it, it's it's a uh, it's scary. It's very scary, and we're talking about Black Friday. So the concerns for Black Friday. What happens, uh, for example, 
If we lose Neto to Castellay, what happens then? And what happens if the Castellay has an issue? What happens then? Um, can we have scaling or not? Um, so these were the concerns that we had, and and during like doing the onboarding to to Castellay, then the, what we examined first is first, do we see cost savings? And yes, we saw a uh, quite significant cost savings. Uh, we saw some uh, around between thirty and forty percent of the compute um, cost saving reduced. Uh, I must say that for us, this is like a, the, the margin on compute is is very significant. In our budget, hosting is like the biggest the, the biggest line, and in the hosting line, uh, the biggest line uh, in AWS is compute. So thirty or between thirty or forty percent on the biggest line that we have. That's that's very significant for us. But again. It's it's a it was it was scary, and here what we've done we basically we implemented fail fast. So we as DevOps we like CI/CD and part of the CI/CD uh, principle is failing fast. So we've implemented failing fast also with adoption of the, of uh, of Cast AI, meaning that we want to encounter the issues as as soon as possible and fix them as as soon as possible, and and we tested it. So we tested what happens when there is no connectivity to Crust AI. And we saw that there is a fallback to Crust OS of Scale. Cool. We, we're happy with that. And we tested it at the load. So we have the stress testing that we are doing for BFCM. Basically, we, since Crust was the cluster of the Crust OS Scale in these, uh, in these uh, occasions, then we saw it under stress. And we also incorporated enough time to experience the dreadful uh, no, not enough spots available or not spots available. And so what happens when the, the class of the instance, the instance type of the spot that we are looking for is not available, also covered by, by cast because they, you just choose the, the next best cost effective uh, spot for us. So the experience here for us, it was it took time and we've done a lot of tests in order to gain confidence. And uh, I think that actually you have the you have a slide about it, but in the in the in the test of uh, what happened, it was a big success, success both from stability and from cost perspective. Well, it's a it's a very uh, positive story and. Okay, I have, so you've started using spot instances. Um, I know there are a lot of solutions where they uh, solve the problem, but then the workflow or the user experience about the product, it's it's so confusing and so hard. People will go back to their, you know, the previous way of doing things. Any uh, feedback or, you know, uh, comments on how easy it was to use Cast AI for spot instances? I'm showing a screenshot of the product, actual product where you can configure things for spot where you know you spoke about fallback and all that so these are some screenshots on of, you know of the product itself so maybe a few lines about how your experience was so so again we are spot native so oh, basically all the compute that we have which is not databases is on spot already so for us it was quite easy and, and natural um didn't pose any any threat or the idea. okay okay thank you all right, so uh, yeah, the, these were a couple of screenshots. You could, you know, go to the Cast AI console if you want to try it out, and uh, things like node template configurations, where we have all these different uh, parameters where you can, which you can set. And this particular screenshot here shows, uh, you know, even though everything is automated, you can still add your own customization to the, to the automation. You can prick what families of instances that you want. Uh, how much your threshold for the budget is and so on. So there's a lot of you know flexible uh, uh, configurations available. And uh, you can also look at this cool visualization on our website. If you haven't done that, you, know, you want to get an idea of how many spot instances are available on GCP or AWS or Azure. <clears throat> there is a spot instance map that you can go and see and it's got these cool visuals on what is available, what the pricing is and so on for different regions. Oh. 
So this is actually super cool because, again, going back to the no spot available issue, this basically shows uh, which region and which AZ um, has an issue right now. Uh, for us, uh, we're also um, agnostic to AZ. So basically, if uh, AZ is like uh, red or yellow, then, then we'll actually we'll trust uh, cast the uh, algorithm to move us to the to the brightest uh, availability zone with the most available most available spot instances and so I think that it also increases our stability uh, to have this information and basically have the algorithm ch choose the right AZ according to to availability which is great yeah and uh, so this is just like Ahi. Uh, I can talk about you know the myth that customers have, hey, spot instances are risky, I'm not going to use it during uh, Black Friday. But then quickly, you can. You already spoke about the problem statement, what you were doing, but then talk a little bit a uh, little bit more about this graph. What are we seeing here? So actually we see over provisioning, <laughs> that's what we see. We're seeing over provisioning. Um, but what we do also see is we see that the, the basically the, um, the upper graph of the upper graph of a is the amount of uh, instances that we have, and you can see that uh, the increase and the decrease in the amount of instances that we have is very um, according to the to the load that we have. And the real savings in my eyes actually comes from uh, the beam packing and the instance selection uh, of the type in and in the AZ. So I would say something actually. Um, it's 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 regarding the myth. You don't have to uh, reduce the 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 gap over here in order to save cost. You can save a lot of cost without doing anything. Just changing the instance types, bin packing, doing bin packing, and basically uh, changing AZ. That that's all, and that can save you a lot of money. Uh, before you even think about, okay, reducing the, the request and the limits of each pod or doing it automatically or manually, it's it saves huge amounts of money. Got it. And uh, if if you're wondering how much money, I mean, we have another uh, success story here, this company called Play Play. Uh, so they, they cater to uh, you know, gaming customers. And, uh, you know, you can see a different type of graph here. It's mostly because of the type of application these uh, this company is providing. And you can actually see the cost savings like, based on uh, the deployment. So we've selected, we show a comparison. So the, the top part of this graph shows how much you're currently spending with the type of instances that you've chosen. And the bottom part is how much you, you can possibly save if you choose these instances that uh, Castia is <clears throat> So uh, we're almost at the end. One final slide, uh, uh, he promised that he'll talk about this slide. Uh, I think they had like a Slack war room, which oh. companies usually do during Black Friday. And yeah. So uh, as I said, stated before, one of the perfectations that we're doing for every Black, Black Friday, you contact all the vendors that we're using. Uh, so here we see the, the schedule from the uh, from Cast AI war room. And uh, if Gene Euclid is one of the leaders in the DevOps, uh, the DevOps leaders uh, in Yotpo, and he was basically leading BFCM, uh, we were very on edge for last BFCM because this was like the first thing, huge amount of load on our system, and we were uh, quite anxious to, to make sure that everything works uh, uh, works okay, and the cast is. Again, our, our autoscaler, and if it doesn't work, we are in deep shit. So uh, we were on edge, edge, and here basically, if Guinness says, guys, everything went well, nothing happened, everything worked as expected, uh, everything handled the load as expected, and uh, just to like give uh, a sense of the of the load, we have several thousands of uh, of servers in our production account. Everything is on Kubernetes. Uh, when we go to to Black Friday, then it's it's between doubles and triples, depends of the of the time in Black Friday, uh, regarding the amount of traffic and the amount of servers that we have, and 
everything was uh, working falsely. So that's big uh, kudos to Kasey. Well, Ahi, uh, so can you hear, I mean, for uh, people who are wondering, hey, how should I try Cast AI? How did you get about, uh, you, you said you found us on Google, Google search, uh, and a little bit more about how you found us, uh, how was the POC process? Uh, what did you like about the product when you initially saw it? So as as director of DevOps, I'm getting like a, a daily mail about someone trying to sell me a, a product which I hate. I absolutely hate. Um, I usually I am trying to find a, we have a problem and we're trying to find a solution. So once we have a problem, we we write down all the requirements of our problem, what we are trying to solve, uh, and then we start looking for solutions. And that's how we got to Cast. We defined our problem, we defined our requirements, and then we basically uh, POC um, every post I wouldn't say every, because there's a lot, lots of uh, solutions out there. We haven't tried them all, but we've tried uh, four of them uh, to the to the point that we think that uh, it was, uh, it was a, a clear choice of which tool we should, uh, we should have taken. And I'm happy to recommend that. All right. Uh, we have one question here um, in the audience. How do you test load before Black Friday and what gives you the confidence that your testing accurately reflects load? That's a, that's a great question. So we enabled a self-testing system called K6. And it's by Grafana Cloud. Uh, and basically uh, our, our our R&D team are using uh, the K6 infrastructure in order to write uh, test source testing. And you can, do, you can do queries for database, you can do, you can do requests for services, uh, and basically load how, add how much load that, we are do, that you want to do. Uh, another important thing about source testing that we are doing is that like there is each, we have five product lines. And so in each product client, they have their, their own stress test. And basically what we do in order for, to simulate BFCM, then we have um, three days different, like uh, in, in, with gaps between them, between them, that everyone is doing the same, every, everyone is doing not the same, their stress test, stress test on the system so that we can see the whole system under load. So we have one stress test, all our engineers is doing it, then we we uh, it's a one day, we see the results. It's the one week of uh, wait of analyzing the result and doing fifth fifth, and then another stuff test. All the product clients, all R and D is doing stuff 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 together. We see the results, and uh, la, uh and then another another week of fixing stuff, and then one one week after, the last stuff test. This way we like minimize the amount of uh, time that we uh, have the resources in large for stuff testing because it, it costs a lot of money actually stuff testing <laughs> and so this way we minimize the, the 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 amount of time that we have the the all the resources like scaled up uh, and then we have the iterations in order to fix the stuff testing i hope that that answered the question yeah yeah uh, we have another question, interesting question about AI. <clears throat> is Yotpo using AI tools as well? If yes, would it would be interesting to learn how you're expecting to load test your AI functionality? Are we using so there's no such company that is not using AI today. And if there's a company that is not using AI today, it will not exist in two years. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so so yes, we are using AI. And um, basically, the uh, the way that we test our, our stuff are, is still request stimulating requests from uh, from customers, recording them, and just multiply it and, and sending it over over. And so, for example, in in uh, Yotpo, when you want to send a, an SMS campaign or an email campaign, you can get AI assistant that basically gives you the wording. Uh, of uh, uh, it can also do, do the pictures if I remember correctly, but it can actually prepare a campaign for you. So, so in the end, it's just an API request. <laughs> right. So, uh, so just load, just uh, 
So this is the API request that gives back the, the campaign or the or the messaging that you want. No, no, you'll get like diverse result, but that's that's AI. So um, curious, are these running on spot inst instances too? All these uh, chatbots or support uh, tools that you're running? So we are we are in favor of managed services. Uh, this is also one of the reasons that we chose Cast AI and not Carpenter. We don't want to manage ourselves. And same goes for AI. We we use managed services for AI. Uh, in this uh, particular particular uh, ah, in this case, it's Microsoft uh, AI. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, no question. I don't see. Let me check the Q and A section again. Um, yeah, I don't see any other questions from the audience. Uh, while you know, if people are still thinking about something or uh, typing their questions, I just want to leave you guys with uh, another QR code here where you can scan. And if you want to get a personalized platform demo, you could do that, or you can test out your cluster. You can just connect your own cluster, test cluster to the Cast AI console and uh, experience, take, take, take it for a test drive. Ahi, I've got a quick question for you because a lot of the conversations that we have with um, companies that we're talking to who are considering using Cast AI is um, initially a little bit of concern over transitioning from doing things manually to doing things in an automated fashion. I'm curious, you've made the jump from doing some things manually to automating some of the things that your team's doing around Black Friday. I'm curious... What was the conversation like when you were talking about using automation for some of the things that you were doing manually? And ultimately, what were the things that got your team and your leadership team over the hump to have trust in using automation? A lot of tests. <laughs> a lot of tests. Uh, a lot of tests. Um, and basically, I think that um, our team is very familiar with uh, Cast AI because we basically uh, tested every concern that we had. And uh, we, we have we had actually a sheet of items that we needed, we wanted to test. Um, but when, while we were doing the POC, the POC was very deep. And we every possible concerns that concern that we had was tested. Lots of bugs were actually open for Cast AI. Cast AI, actually, I think that uh, there's a wonderful team in the R&D over there and in support. And uh, basically, uh, I think I would give a shout out to Sharvan actually, actually, because he was able to <laughs> to to answer all the questions and make sure that we get the answer for each of, each of the concerns that we had, and and basically also follow up on all the bugs that we found, and we found bugs. Uh, I think that you can say it out loud. There, there, there are bugs and there will be bugs. And it's okay uh, in, every, in every software company. And uh, as soon as the, again, going back to fail fast, if we find a bug and, it, and it's and it's fixed promptly, then, then we're okay, okay with it. Make sense? Well, so 2024 Black Friday is coming up, Ahi. Uh, are you excited or nervous? Excited. Sadden? No, I, I, excited. Is very, <laughs> excited. Very excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like there is all, always nervousness, but I'm I'm pretty confident in our system and in in, in cast, and I think that we have a very stable info, and we are working continuously to make it more and more and more stable. Got it. Okay. Yeah, we we wish you the uh, we wish you all the luck. We make more money during Black Friday, and I hope you get a lot of user traffic and. <laughs> no outages. Uh, all right. So uh, I don't see any other questions. Um, let me check one last time. Yeah, I think we're good. So thanks again for joining. Joe, if you want to uh, close it out. Absolutely. So thank you uh, all for joining. We really appreciate you taking the time. We know everybody is really busy right now leading up to Black Friday. Hope you found the webinar really useful and gained some insights into how you can make sure your infrastructure is good to go for Black Friday. Um, please go ahead uh, if you want to get a, a platform demo and use this QR code, and then we'll follow up with a recording of the session and some of the key takeaways so you've got those as well. Thanks, everybody.